and we begin in downtown Vancouver at this hour where crews are investigating the partial collapse of a building. Greg Harper joins us live from the scene with more. Greg. Good morning, Kyle. Uh, here at Helmkin and Granville, uh, this intersection remains uh, shut down. It looks as though it will be for quite some time, certainly for the morning commute. Uh, and this is why. Look at all the debris behind me. Lots of uh, brick came down here as part of this building collapsed around uh, 3.30 this morning. We did speak to a woman who was working inside at the time it happened. She said it sounded like a car crash. Uh, she came running out to see all the debris on the sidewalk. What's taking place here right now, uh, the Vancouver Fire Department is here. Uh, the VPD is here right now. City engineers are here investigating uh, what took place here, trying to figure out uh, how this happened. It's amazing looking at it that no one was seriously injured here. The woman who was working in the store at the time told us, a couple people told her that the, if we can go back on camera here, that the uh, truck that you see behind me here backed into a telephone line and that took part of the overhang from the roof down. This has not been confirmed by officials uh, on the scene here. I uh, did speak to Sergeant Randy Fincham with the uh, Vancouver Police Department who is only saying that uh, the VPD is investigating the matter. As far as for how long this area is going to be closed, there is a construction crew that's en route to the scene here. And it sounds as though, in talking to the uh, battalion chief here with the Vancouver Fire Department, that the structure here uh, isn't safe. So there's going to be uh, not only a cleanup, but quite some work uh, to fix what took place here around 3.30 this morning. Kyle? All right, Greg Harper, live for us in downtown Vancouver this morning. Greg, thanks for that. Well, it's a sure sign that summer is on the way. Today marks the start of cruise ship season at the port of Metro Vancouver. This is a live look right now at Canada Place. Oh, we got a bit of a traffic jam here. The first ship has already arrived, the Celebrity Solstice, and uh, the North Norwegian something or other is pulling up behind it there. Can't read the sign right now. <laughs> Alaska cruise ship season kicks off, of course, this morning, and it looks to be on par with last year's strong showing. About 812,000 passengers expected to come through the city of Vancouver. Organizers say each time these floating cities drop anchor here, they stimulate more than $2 million in economic benefits. Broken down even further, that amounts to 283,000 hotel stays in Vancouver, 6,000 direct and indirect jobs, and $220 million in wages and tax revenues for all three levels of government. Kids in Abbotsford are the latest casualties of escalating job action by BC teachers. The Abbotsford School District is cancelling recess for elementary and middle schools as the teachers' job action draws on. The district claims the cut is necessary because it can no longer bear the cost of having a management of having management supervise the breaks. That means classes will start about 15 to 20 minutes later than usual, beginning Monday morning. An embarrassing situation for the provincial government. It's facing increasing criticism for a social services website that can't seem to stay online. Most of us accept in this day and age that you give a computer system one chance to reboot and it should come back nicely. That happened over the lunch hour. It seemed to be going well. And now we find out it's not gone well at all. So as I say, we're going to get to the bottom of this. I'm very annoyed about this. And we're going to sort out what our remedies are. The technology minister confidently told reporters the integrated case management was up and running after days of crashing. About an hour later, he admitted the $180 million system was down again. The website delivers services like welfare, linking government files with social workers, support agencies, even police. This computer failure is just, it is a, it is a symptom of a system that is sick and needs to be re reset. BC's Children's Watchdog is not a fan of the ICM system, calling it a disaster. Mary Ellen Terpelifond has highlighted its problems in her previous reports. Canada, the U.S. and China are offering assistance in the search for nearly 300 missing schoolgirls in Nigeria. The country is struggling to get the girls back before they're sold, presumably into slavery and forced marriages. Last month, an Islamic extremist group stormed a local school and abducted the children. U.S. First Lady Michelle Obama is now seen in a new photograph released from the White House holding a sign with the hashtag Bring Back Our Girls. Blown up a hotel in Syria used by the president's forces destroyed destroying the building and causing widespread damage. A large cloud of smoke can be seen rising from the site. Today's explosion is a significant blow to President Bashar al-Assad's government as his troops prepare to regain control following last week's ceasefire agreement. 
Firefighters in the greater Toronto area spent the night pouring water on a massive propane tank at a compressed gas facility. A fire broke out at the Air Liquide plant in Brampton. The flames ignited several smaller propane tanks, sending some large fireballs into the sky. The main concern was a 30,000 gallon tank, so firefighters poured water on it with aerial hoses to keep it cool and the flames at bay. One worker at the plant suffered minor burns. There's no word on what caused the initial fire in a back shed on the property. Vancouver seafood lovers and sellers have witnessed a surprising change in the marketplace. Dungeness crab has doubled in price over the last year, even selling for more than lobster. The increase is attributed to a low supply and huge demand for the delicacy in China. That's where many suppliers have sent their product. Some local businesses aren't even selling the crab because it's too expensive to stock. Because of this sudden drop of uh, supply, so a lot of uh, uh, companies or, or so, uh, harvesters taking opportunity to create, you know, their their own, you know, wealth as much as they can. So that's why it's the price driving up so high, which we have never seen in my 35 years of uh, uh, seafood business. That supplier thinks the bubble has already burst on Dungeness crab because of the high prices. It's sold for more than $20 a pound in some local shops.